plan is well, a hundred percent. I know chess is going to get thrashed. I'm considering throwing in shoulders at the end. I'm considering it. It's been a little while since I got a shoulder pump, so maybe we'll get that going afterwards. Eh, well, I'll have to see. You know, the, for me with shoulders, it's kind of just how I feel. Like, whether or not I feel like doing them. Because, I mean, <laughs> even on a back day or when I'm, you know, checking with arm pump, the shoulders are still pretty dominant. So it's not like they're, they're not really a lacking muscle group for me. So, you know, in the instance of having a muscle group, which is relative to the rest of your body, you know, developed, you know, maybe a little bit beyond everything else, then... I wouldn't mind hitting it a lot less frequently, right? which is why I mean I haven't done shoulders for weeks. Uh, but you know, let's say for whatever reason you're a genetic phenom, you got the biggest triceps in your gym, but your biases are lacking. You know, no need to hit triceps twice a week at that point. You may as well just hit them. Fucking, I don't know. Maybe even not at all. Just from doing bench, they'll they'll get some work. You know, maintaining muscle is far easier than building it, right? For me to just try to maintain uh, my shoulders, in a, I mean, in a bulking context where I'm eating a lot of food, uh, <laughs> you know, they're not just going to fucking shrink out of nowhere. So when I diet down, right, when I try to lose body fat so I'm limiting my calories, I do make sure to train, you know, everything just as frequently. I would not want to just totally skip shoulders when dieting just because, you know, your muscle needs stimulation to be maintained. You know, I'm not saying if I didn't do shoulders for my next cut that they would disappear into nothingness, but I would say they'd probably be more prone to some atrophy if they didn't get worked. You, know, you, uh, you use it or you lose it. Mad freaking simple. Mad simple so basic idea for chest fucking heavy pressing you know the drill same shit as normal move into some cable stuff and some pec decks I was just thinking about this a little bit you know how uh, how often do you need a rest week how often are you taking significant periods off of the gym you know I, and by significant I mean you know, more than like three or four days. Because, I mean, it's noticeable enough that that's going to most certainly fucking affect your progress. Now, be it uh, just scheduling issues. I mean, yeah, it's kind of hard to get around that. But, you know, consistency, if you actually want to make progress, it's probably the fucking number one factor. You know, you're not going to get jack shit. Let's say you do lift you go in fucking maybe twice a week and you got the craziest fucking workout ever insane pump but then you don't go in the rest of the days man I mean you know I guess Mike Menser might think that that's a good idea fucking you know one one workout and then four days of rest I'm, I'm not so convinced as far as I can tell it's better to go in near daily than to try to take you know, a lot of time off. And a lot of the time I think that, you know, the reason that you might get tired of training is just because you're not, you know, you're split or your workouts or whatever, they're not really tailored to your own, you know, personal needs. Like, let's say you've got a workout routine that your buddy puts you on or some shit, or maybe you came up with one, you're kind of a beginner, and it's just too fucking much volume. You're in the gym for like two hours every lift, you're getting fucking tired of it, you know, you're not getting an awesome pump, it's just, it just feels like work. No fucking wonder you're tired of that shit, man. You know, but that's kind of up to you, unless, you know, maybe you want to, like, pay a coach to come up with some shit for you, but I would say the best, well, not even the best, you know, I always like the fact that I'm coming up with my own shit, because then it just lets me sort of adjust my workouts and my rep schemes and my styles and whatever, to what I know is going to feel good and give me results. Now, obviously, that's going to take a bit more effort on your end, 
but you know it's definitely going to be worth it especially if you can uh, if you can come up with a routine that you can actually stick to and enjoy it doesn't feel like you're just doing arbitrary work then it's just going to put you on a fucking upward spiral if every time you go to the gym you like what you're doing you like the fucking pump from it and you like the progress you got there is no fucking reason that you would stop you know but if you don't like what you're doing you're getting like shit pumps you're fucking you just like you just you're just not enjoying it then there's no real reason apart from you know perhaps just your own discipline that's going to keep you lifting you know ideally you want your uh, your progress to be an upward spiral like, let's say you're a beginner. No gains yet. First week is pretty hard. Second week, noticeably easier than the first. And then gradually it gets easier, easier, easier. And then you actually start to, holy shit, I got a fucking bicep plane. Whoa. Like shit, like shit like that. It's just going to make you keep fucking going up. But you know, if you're just tired all the time and you're not really enjoying what you're doing, maybe you're not putting enough effort into your diet or you're not sleeping enough. Then if every time you go to the gym, you attribute it with fucking, you know, negative experiences. I, I mean, it's, you almost just can't be blamed for not wanting to go in. So, I would most certainly want you to reflect on your training routine. And maybe think of any kind of aspect of it that you don't necessarily love. And potentially try to... Try to morph it around into something that you could be a little bit more agreeable to. Now that does not mean, oh, leg, leg day is pretty hard for me. I'm gonna skip leg day. That's, <laughs> I'm not talking about that far. But we're like two minutes away, let's just fucking get started. Okay, so usually I just kind of jump straight to that. You know, first working set without showing any of the warm up. But, you know, some of you guys have been getting a little curious. So, basically, you know, in a real basic sense, I'm just trying to warm up everything that I'm about to use. So, even though, you know, it's a chest day, I'm going to be doing heavy pressing for my chest, I'm still going to get some tricep activation. So, I'll start off with just, you know, light single arm push downs, just get some blood in the area. If your elbows are known to kind of get a little bit tender when you're pressing, this could probably help you too. But, you know, I'll sit here for a while, warm these up. I'll do a little bit of kind of face pulls-ish. Just because, if, like, if my rotator cuffs are completely cold before I start pressing, I've just always noticed that's when I tend to get, you know, kind of a crunchy rep. I just don't feel as stable. So I'll probably do a couple more sets of here. One arm, sort of, yeah, kind of a half face pull, half rotator activation. You know, so I'm feeling my rear delts firing, but I'm also getting some of that internal rotation. You know, all sorts of good shit. And then I'll do a little bit of chest activation by way of, you know, just kind of some single body cable presses. Now, none of these movements I consider working sets, not even fucking close. All I'm trying to do is prep the muscles that I'm about to use and you know my joints and everything else so that when I jump onto the incline barbell you know I don't fucking get fucked up right so I'll just sit here and rotate between those three for well, maybe another five mm -hmm. ten minutes and yeah, probably not ten more like five and then just go start loading up plates on the uh, incline bench I was just going to jump to the first working set, but I'll show the warm-ups. So, again, I'm not trying to do any work. I'm just trying to get exposed to the weight. So, you know, that was, that was maybe, what, 5% of, like, the intensity I could reach with an actual working set. Because all I'm doing is fucking, you know, putting a plate on the pecs, 
then two for a couple, then three, maybe three and a 25. We'll see what I feel like. But, you know, I'm trying to just get as warm, get warmed up as quickly as possible by doing the least amount of fatigue as possible, right? Because I'm perfectly fresh. My pecs are capable of moving around a lot of weight. And I want to, you know, push them to the fucking limit. Three sixty five will be a good first set. Thanks. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. Oh. I'm inclined to believe that I didn't get the best sleep last night. I was kind of up late, got up early. Uh, but, you know, even though that could be, you know, affecting my fucking strength, you know, like that was definitely not the strongest I've ever been on chess. You know, I don't fucking give a fuck about strength. Like, obviously, I like fucking throwing up a shit ton of weight. It's cool. But... What's important isn't necessarily the weight that's being moved. More so, it's just about the fact that, you know, whatever your given condition is on the day, be it like a day where my chest just feels astronomically stronger than normal, like I hit the perfect fucking combination of rest, hydration, food, you know, everything. Or days where I'm a little bit less strong than my peak. You know, as long as I'm still pushing myself, you know, towards failure, Right, with still, you know, as much weight as I can do, right, heavier stuff in the beginning, maybe lighter squeezing stuff towards the end, then guess what? I'm going to have a fucking sick lift. So numbers can kind of mess with your head. Uh, I guess if you're a power lifter, then they should. But if you're, if you're trying to bodybuild, if you're trying to just train for muscle growth, right, the important thing isn't the numbers per se, right? It's a step behind the numbers, just the effort that you're putting into your sets, because I've had days where my strength was through the fucking toilet. Like I got shit sleep, hardly drank, you know, jack. But then my fucking pump was still insane, right? You know, it's not about the numerical metrics of the lift. It's more so about the effort and then the pump at the end. So plan now is to do some kind of bent over cable presses. Now, still pretty heavy. I mean, 60 pounds, the stack is 80, but... I'm not just pressing like away from my body, right? So just by nature, the fact that these cables are so wide, right? When I get to the top, when my hands are together, not only are they pushing the weight away from my hands, but they're also, you know, I've got to use my pecs to pull them together. So it's like a fucking combination to a fly and a press. So I think a few of these ought to feel fucking sick. <clears throat> Oof. <sighs> 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 
I'll do a drop set for this one. Okay, let's do some pack deck. Whenever I do pack deck, I usually like to have my hands pretty much shoulder height. You know, any higher than that, I mean, I feel like maybe you'll get too much shoulder involved and there's just no need to go any lower. Like, let's say I have this seat all the way at the top, but now my hands are like down here. I, I mean, do whatever you want. I'm just telling you what I like. Obviously, I'm a fan of partials. One more set of cables, you know, cable flies, and then this chest portion of the lift is gonna be fucking complete. I'm gonna do a drop slash superset because I'm gonna drop the weight, but I'm also going to change the style of reps. So really right now, most of the hard work has been done. I'm just trying to fucking finish off the pump. So, Gonna start with a set of flies, just pretty basic. You know, I would like to have flies like this, where, you know, my torso is pretty much in line with where the cables are. It always kind of, it just kind of bugs me when people do flies way out here, right? Like, let's say I grab the handles and I came way out here. Cause sure, you know, you got a lot of tension down in this bottom half, but the rep is gonna get easier and will be the easiest up here at the top, right? Now, you know, sure, you could also apply the, apply the bro science logic. Like, oh, well, it's easier at the top so you can flex it harder. You know, I'm not saying that doing flies way out here is wrong. But for me, I like it, you know, in line such that I have the most tension up here at the top. Right? So when I'm squeezing the hardest, I'm also holding up the most weight. But, you know, whatever. So a set of these, probably 10, 15 reps and then drop the weight by almost half. And rather than doing flies right in front of me, I'm gonna do them sort of down here. So I'm just like squeezing right in front of my belly button just to kind of get, uh, you know, stretch out the lower pec. You know, I'm not a huge lower pec uh, fan in terms of work, like you're never gonna catch me doing decline. For the most part, I think, ev you know, everybody's got a good enough lower chest, but it's still a muscle on your fucking frame. So 
you know, getting some lower pest, act, pest <laughs> lower peck activation is going to be good for you. There's some stuff going on down here. Like there's a little kind of interesting muscle. I don't know. Who, who gives a fuck? Whatever. All I know is after I do this set, this chest pump is going to be complete and we can go check it out. Oh, fuck. But we're done. Let's go check the pump and then we'll get some shoulders going after this. Okay, chest has been freaking annihilated. Did you expect any different? I know for a fact I didn't. So let's see what kind of pump those incline bench, cable press, pec deck, and then some cable flies at the end elicited. Now, what do you think? Let's, uh, let's have a little, a little Q and a session. Am I fucking pumped beyond belief? And I'm going to be shocked and I'm going to sit here and flex for like three minutes and go, Whoa, holy fuck, I'm pumped. Or am I going to say, eh, that pump kind of sucks. Enter your votes now, right? I think you fucking know. It's not even a question, but let's see what's going on. Oh, gosh. Whoa. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're fucking pumped. Let's see, how's that looking on screen? Oh, very nice. Very freaking nice. Let's uh, turn down the exposure just a touch more. Oh. Dude, once you start fucking with the exposure on your video, I mean, what did that add? 10 pounds of lean mass and Took off 5% body fat. Psh, 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 psh. Fucking killer. <sighs> Freaky. <sighs> Dude, I mean, <laughs> I love the pump check. It's just a fucking treat. It's always a nice little something to look forward to at the end of the lift. It's a good little motivator. I will say this. I was, um, I wouldn't mind if it was just me lifting like I was before. And, you know, I wasn't like posting these videos and stuff. When I start cutting, I would not mind not even fucking checking the pump and just waiting like three weeks before I actually saw or before I actually kind of, you know, checked out how I looked after, you know, three weeks of 2,500 cals. Just because, you know, if you're looking at yourself every day, you know, changes are going to be pretty gradual. Whereas, you know, if I take some time off from checking the pump, you know, I just go in, do my lift. I mean, I obviously feel that I'm pumped, but I don't look at myself for like a considerable period, a couple of weeks at least. Then you may start to notice little changes. That's what I did. Uh, I talked about this a while ago. This was fucking 20, uh, end of 2021. I think that's when I actually tried to start bulking. I didn't check the pump for like four months. And then at the end, I was like, holy fuck. Whoa, fucking killer. 
you know, that was a, that was such a stoic period in the gym. Go in, do my lift, and leave. I wouldn't even need to bring a pump cover because all I'd do is wear a long sleeve shirt, and that'd be the end of it. You know, I was really, um, I was really channeling Dorian Yates then. Whoa, but all right, let's uh, let's hit a couple more, and then we can go back and do some shoulders. Dude, fucking, just love, I, <laughs> I sound like a fucking broken record every time I say this, but I just fucking love being pumped. All right, one, one more, one more side chest, then we can go back. <sighs> oh, freaky. Fucking Freaky. All right, let's, uh, so plan for shoulders. Um, rear delts first. I'm only gonna do side and rear. I mean, you know, my front delts, they fucking, they're big enough. From doing a lot of incline work, your, your front delts are gonna get worked. Even just doing any pressing. You know, I think front delts for some is just, I mean, it's just unnecessary, you know. Front delts, sure, I mean, they might look kinda cool in the front, I mean, it's in the fucking name, but you know, your side and rear, that's what's going to give you this fucking roundness and really make your shoulders pop. Especially like you see that fucking shadow right at the top of my tricep, right? That's from having fucking big ass rear delts, rear delts, man, neglected muscle group. So plan. Yeah. Like I was saying, so plan is going to be eight sets, uh, a little bit less volume than normal just because my shoulders are fucking big enough, but I do want to work them every so often. So eight sets of rear delts first. Uh, probably going to be laying face pulls, reverse pec deck. And you'll see it. So eight sets of rear delts and then eight sets of side delts. So let's just fucking go check it out and then we can come back here and see if the shoulders are popping any more than they already fucking are. You got to do it sometime. Uh, yeah, I do. I did do so. I gotta, I gotta say a little something. Okay, so I love face bolts. The action of it, perfect for squeezing the rear delt. Like I fucking, uh, apart from maybe reverse pec deck, it's, I mean, it's a perfect rear delt activation. But I find it to be just so fucking annoying to try to sit here and like counterbalance the weight and like stand up with it. I think that's just not fucking. It's just a fucking hassle. So when I do them, I like butting a bench right up against the cable, laying down, and then doing face pulls. Fucking, what's the, what if, what's the word I'm thinking of? Well, I'm just in a fucking lying position. So I don't have to fucking worry about like counterbalance or anything else. All I gotta focus on is my rear delts. So I'll sit here for four sets. <clears throat> So I'm really just going for a burn. I mean, eh. for me, I've never really done shoulders with an excessive amount of weight. Like I want, I want to push it, but not like crazy. Okay, phone is uh, phone's near death, so I'm only gonna get a couple of clips of each of these sets. But I'm just gonna sit, fucking sit here for the whole rear delt workout. I've already done four, so I'll do one more. You know, I kind of up the weight on the first two sets, and then now I've just been doing the stack, but. I'm gonna sit here for the whole eight sets. You know, being such a simple fucking muscle, like, the same with fucking curls or biceps or pushdowns. You know, if I fucking love the feeling of just a straight bar pushdown, or, if, you know, on this particular day, I love the feeling of just alternating dumbbell curls, I'll sit there for the whole fucking lift. 
because I know I'm going to fatigue the muscle I'm targeting and I'm going to fucking fully pump it up. So I'm going to sit here for four more and then we move on to some side delt shit. So I'll, I'll just show this one and then we can cut to the next, the next uh, movements. Boom. In similar fashion to rear delts, I think I'm gonna follow suit with that simplicity and just sit here for eight sets of, you know, side laterals. You know, usually I like dumbbells, but I do dumbbells all the time. I do like this machine, you know, not too complicated. It's just a fucking exact same movement. Movie bit, the exact same movement. So I'm gonna sit here for eight. I'll just show this first one. And then we can go down and see what kind of shoulder pump we're working with. <laughs> All right. I'd say, hey, go as heavy as you can without feeling too much traps. That's pretty much a decent rule for any side lateral. So just imagine that seven more times. All right, pump check number fucking two. We got a two and one today. Who doesn't love it? So, yeah, all I fucking did was I sat there, you know, it took me like 20 minutes. Just, you know, did my set, whatever, 20-ish reps, fucking burned out, and then just sat down for a little longer. You know, I don't mind a repetitive workout as long as I'm hitting the fucking muscle I'm trying to hit. And doing it in such a way that I feel like I'm working the whole thing and getting the fucking sick ass pump. So let's see what eight sets of lying cable face pulls followed by eight sets of uh, machine lateral raises did for the fucking delts. Ugh. I need some bigger wife beaters, man. These were, these fit me comfortably when I was 180 and I have not replaced them. Oh yeah, we got something going on for sure. Whoosh. Yeah, fucking the rear delts just poking out the side over the tricep. That is what you freaking want. Let's do a little bit of a rear lat spread, see if they're poking up. Yeesh. So, just a fucking side and rear delt pump. They're looking pretty freaking round. You know, obviously the front delts are, you know, they're fucking big enough. Ooh, all right. <laughs> That's just freaky fucking standing here and like not even a full on lat spread, just hands on hips. Fucking beastly. So, even if you got a muscle where you're a little tired of it, it's not your fucking favorite. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm not speaking from experience. I love fucking hitting all of them. But if that's you and, you know, you don't really look forward to a certain day, simply by fucking thinking that in your head, you're already setting yourself up for failure. Like, okay, maybe not complete failure, but are you going to go harder or less hard on a lift if you go in and think, Ah, geez, fucking shoulder day. Ah, fuck shoulders, man, this sucks. Or the guy who's like, all right, let's fucking just hit this shit. Or, you know, the guy who's at least just neutral about it is miles ahead of the guy who's negative about it. You know, like I was saying in the fucking car, if you've got negative associations with what you're doing, you're not going to fucking want to do it. And even just by thinking this shit in your head, right, you're telling yourself, Oh, I don't like this. Oh, blah, blah. It's just going to be less enjoyable for you. 
So ideally, fucking that, if you don't like shoulders or if you don't like whatever muscle group, you know, that's, that's your preference, who gives a fuck, at least try to be neutral about it because then, I mean, you're going to like it at the end when you fucking check the pump, you know, so at least wait for, uh, wait for the pump to, uh, to decide how you feel about a certain muscle. Because I tell you what, I mean, I'll do leg days where I'm fucking exhausted, right? And in between each set of leg extensions, I'm not even really thinking cohesive thoughts. I'm just like, <sighs> you know what I'm saying? But then at the end of it, when I'm, you know, back in here fucking going like, whoa, holy fuck. You know, that's what I really associate the lift with. If you, uh, if you catch my drift, but that's all I got. Let's go get in the fucking car. All right. That was a freaky ass shoulder pump. If I've ever had one. And you know, I have, so I fucking, I didn't bring the cluster dextrin shake. So instead I got two, um, two bottles of apple juice from the vending machine. I already, I drank the first one on the way out. So 34 grams of carbs each 68, you know, in terms of like the anabolic window, like after you work out, you want to instantly eat some fucking food. I mean, you'll be fine if you fucking, you know, wait an hour before going home and eating whatever. But, you know, you got to think best case scenario, I just burned off some fucking glycogen, right? Intramuscular. I got to replenish that shit. So, two, how much is one of these in terms of volume? Does it even fucking say? Uh, I don't know. A couple cups of apple juice good with me. I mean, quick digesting sugar. So let's freaking roll. <clears throat> Try not to bump in anybody on the way out. Back to school, man. School is coming up quick. I'm spoiled. I've been fucking spoiled these last couple days. I haven't had to do anything. You know, I get up and do my cardio and then eat some food and go lift later and just fucking sleep some more. This is perfect. That's the ideal state of a lifter. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So I've got a, uh, I've got a, I'm taking a sculpture class as one of my electives. I, uh, the rest are fucking, you know, boring, like, math and shit, but maybe that will be cool. Can you imagine me with a little fucking apron spinning some, uh, spinning some pots and, and whatever else you do with clay? Uh, that could be fun. We'll have to, we'll have to see. We will have to fucking see. But it's not going to stop the lifts. I mean, if you're a long-term viewer... Fucking day one through, uh, day one through what? Probably 120-ish. All those lifts from when I was at school, so. It won't really get in the way much. If at all. But, you know, if that's you, if you're, uh, if you're getting ready to go back to school and you've been You've had a bit more free time over the summer, so you've been lifting consistently. Try not to break that streak. Uh, it can definitely be a little bit more difficult to balance out your training routine with your, you know, just your life, right? Purely due to the fact that you've only got so much time in the day. But, you know, if you want to prioritize your training and make some fucking progress, that may require some freaking sacrifices, right? Main one, I mean, fucking college dude, what do you think the main distractor from gains is going to be? Fucking just going out partying. Uh, I guess I'm just lucky that's not really my, not really into that at all, so it's not really a distraction I have to deal with. But I'd say, uh, or, pretty large fucking percentage of dudes who I see at the, uh, I don't really lift at the wreck anymore just because it's so busy, 
Like I've got a there's a different gym I go to at school. I'll, I'll still circulate like I do now, but you know I run into a lot of dudes. Oh, fuck. Oh, dude, I didn't get any fucking sleep last night. I'm so fucking hungover. I mean, good for you for fucking lifting, man. But so so yeah. I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, who gives a fuck? I don't care. But. If you want some progress, if you want some freaking results, you know, alcohol consumption, bro, you're going to reduce your muscle protein synthesis. It's been scientifically proven. So at least try to be the, try to be the designated driver. That's probably the best case scenario if, if you still got to get out there for the nightlife. But I mean, I'm going to fucking... <laughs> Every fucking Friday night or whatever, you're just going to see another lifting video from me. And, uh, dude, I love it because then I got a fucking empty gym. I don't have to worry about waiting for machines or working in or anything. So. Yeah, main idea, you know, if you've been getting after it, you've been actually starting to see some results. Don't just give it up for some, some instant gratification. I would pretty much say generalized instant gratification is like the antithesis of progress, you know, by, uh, by any means. So the more you can, <laughs> this, this sounds like some shit Jocko or some shit would say, or some dude, the more you can enjoy the grind. You want to, you got to enjoy the grind. I don't, I'm not really so serious about it as that to like say it like that. But, you know, there's some legitimacy to that. You know, again, like I was fucking saying earlier, right? The more enjoyable you can make your routine for you personally, you know, and kind of balance that out with the, uh, the effectiveness of your workout routine, the easier it's going to be to stick to, the more you're going to want to do it, and then the more results you're going to get from it, which in turn is going to just feed back into that little positive spiral. You know, two years pass... People are fucking asking you how you got so big. That is the way to do it. You know, not to say that you, the whole goal of lifting should be to get other people's approval. I mean, that's, uh, I think we all fucking know that. But it is, it's definitely an indicator you're starting to make some progress if other people are noticing. Because you know, if it's just you, I mean, <laughs> everybody's got fucking body dysmorphia to some kind of degree. It, the severity of it can differ from person to person. I think I'm pretty good about it, you know, like it doesn't really mess with me too much just because I've got a very solid grasp on the reality of, you know, how my body looks in the sense of, you know, I don't get um, discouraged from wanting to start a bulk after I've been dieted for a while because I know, well, you know, when I'm dieted and I'm lean, I'm looking at myself in the mirror when I'm fucking lifting, getting just freaky, veiny pumps striated all over the place. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, man, this is sick. Right? That's the positive. And then, you know, when you're dieted down too, you've got the negative of, oh, dude, I'm fucking hungry. Right? You gotta, you gotta be able to understand that, you know, the benefits also come with the drawbacks. And then, you know, when you're bulked up, extra strong, maybe not as lean, you know, you gotta put on a little bit of extra body fat. But in either case, oh, that was a fucking red light if I've ever seen one. Uh, in, uh, in either case, for me, what I'm really looking at is the progress that's being made from each state of fucking lifting. You know, uh, main gaining, that's legit. If you just fucking eat your protein and then eat as much food as you're hungry for and then go to the gym and train hard, you will grow muscle slowly over time. As of late, I've been more so into the bulking and cutting method. But, you know, you gotta just do whatever works best for you. You gotta figure that shit out. But, in either case, right, when I'm bulking up, and fuck yeah, I'm making progress. I'm adding some contractile tissue to my frame. I'm fucking getting freaky ass pumps, loading up tons of weight. That's badass. Love it. And then, you know, after so long of that, I'm like, all right, let's trim down. Let's see what I've built. So, you know, the dieting phase is more so, eh, it's more so just kind of 
taking a look off of a... It's like if I'm climbing the mountain when I'm bulking, the dieting phase is like taking a seat, turning around, and looking at what I've built. You know, looking at how hard, how high I've come. So, but even then, the dieting phase also serves to benefit me because it lets me kind of reset my fucking uh, appetite. Because right now, it's a lot harder for me to eat as much food as I'm eating than it was in the beginning of the uh, the bulk. Like, once I stopped dieting and I started, you know, eating a lot of food again, I had a fucking, like, nine and a half thousand calorie day, and it didn't even fucking feel that crazy. And now, like, hitting five, I'm, I am full. So, you know, m month and a half, two-ish months of a, of a uh, you know, mini cut, kind of reset the, uh, the appetite, and then you know, trim down a little bit of excess body fat so I can have that buffer so when I start bulking up again... I get to stay relatively lean. So, for me, that's been my uh, my go-to method. You know, gain so much weight on the bulk, trim down a tad, and ideally, that trim down weight is higher than the weight at the beginning of the bulk. So, every one of these little bulk and cuts is a little more and more and more mass. You know, I'm not saying mass, you know, accruing mass is the end-all, be-all goal. But, I mean, it, for me, it kind of is, you know, I want some more muscle in this frame. There will be a limit, of course, but I'm not all the way freaking there yet. I'm not all the way there yet. But, you know, eventually I'll probably reach a size I'm comfortable with. You know, and I mean, not, not like 300, but, you know, eh, yeah, I guess I'll have to see. And then I'll just be kind of, you know, maintaining that weight. Won't have to push the bulk so hard and just kind of stay a trim, whatever weight that ends up being. But until then, keep fucking going hard. So, cardio in the morning um, makes me sad to to think about cardio and its context with uh, you know how it relates to you guys because I know you don't do it. But in that sense. I'm not going to stop leading by example, right? Just know I'm doing my cardio, right? You can do it that what you will. So I'm going to go do the cluster dextrin shake, eat some more food, and then uh, I'm ready for fucking bed. So I will see you tomorrow for back at buys.